One aspect of many C programs or C embedded systems is that they are part of a product line, which means that you have to build several variants of the same system. Variants mean that some things are different, but most things are the same. Typically, you can do this in C in two ways. You can either do runtime stuff, you know, pointer rewiring, if statement, stuff like that, or you can do it statically with a preprocessor. In Embedder, we have a somewhat more systematic approach. We first um, model the actual variability of the system in a so-called feature model. Feature models are, well, descriptions of the variability of systems and constraints between the various configuration options called features. So here, for example, is uh, a feature model called Flight Processor. It has a root feature called Processing. And then this feature says that its child features, nullify and normalize speed, are optional. So you can have that, and you can have that, you can have both, you can have none of them. Now, normalized speed has two more child features, but they are XOR. So you either have one of them, you either have this one or that one, but not both and not none. You can also look at the feature model. Graphically, we have kind of abused UML a little bit. The dashed lines are optional. The, you know, hollow diamonds are um, XOR. There are two more constraints, OR and mandatory. Mandatory would be this, uh, the, the, the solid line and uh, optional would be the filled diamond. Now, once you describe the variability in a feature model like this, you can now define configurations. Here is a configuration called do nothing for this feature model that has none of these features, right? There is one that has nullify only. It only has this feature. Since they're both optional, that's fine. Here is one nullify max at 200. It has the nullify and the normalized speed. And then once you have normalized speed, of course, you need one of the two child features. And you can even try to add the other one. But then you get another error that says you can only have one of them. So this really gives you a high level definition of the variability with constraints between the features. And then you can define various product variants. Now, how do you map this to application code? Well, there is several aspects to that. First of all, there is runtime variability, where you make the decision about the variant at runtime. You do this by, first of all, deploying a feature model at runtime for this feature model into your uh, application module. And then you define a variable that holds the actual product configuration. And this store config statement stores this configuration for that feature model into this variable. That's a bit of a strange notation. You would maybe prefer to use assignments, but the reason why we've done it this way is because for various reasons of how it's implemented, it's just not so easy to do it any other way. <laughs> it's, it's, it has to do with the structs and statements and struct instantiation and stuff. Anyway, um, so here we store <coughs> the do nothing configuration. And then we call this process track point and um, expect some results. Then, just for the example, we store another option. And then we get, of course, zero for the altitude because nullify actually sets the altitude to zero and so on. So how does this actually work? Well, essentially, inside this process thing, you pass in the configuration. And then you have a so-called variant switch. That's essentially a switch statement that... Uh, switches or cases over expressions over the features. The reason why we have created a separate language construct is the same reason we always do this, uh, is because it makes a verification simpler. For example, in these expressions, you can only use um, features as the elements and not any other, you know, Boolean flag. And also, in a future version, we haven't done that yet. If you, let's say, write something like that, then you would get an error here because when we know statically that max custom and max 100 cannot be in the same feature model because they're XORed, right? So we can do all these stack, uh, checks statically and so that's why we have the specific functionality, a specific language construct. And then semantically at runtime it acts as an if, so if you have those two uh, options then you do that, else you do something else and so that's just a runtime uh, if. Uh, it's implemented by essentially storing all the feature presence 
values, like do you have this feature, don't you have this feature, in a big struct, and and we remember remember, remember that here, and so that's the whole that's the whole trick. There is also static variability where you make the decision at uh, runtime. Let me just reopen this because there is this um, bug in MPS that doesn't color things as it should. So let's go here first. So here is the detailed product line. And again, these things should have colors. I don't know why today it doesn't work. Um, it's a it's a bug that's submitted and that will be fixed in the next version. Anyway, it says that this um, statement here should only be in the system if the nullify feature is selected, and uh, you can write you know other constraint or other feature presence conditions, and you can look at this program either like this where you have the conditions here. You can look at it as the so-called concise product line. But there is only this little question mark and it says the present conditions in the inspector and what's maybe most interesting you can look at the variant so this is now the program for the do nothing variant where most of these things these statements are missing here is the max 100 and here is the nullify only so you can look and edit the program in the product specific variant let's go back to the detailed product line. Ah, you see, now there. Now we have the colors. <laughs> the nice thing about the colors is that they uh, the color is decided based on the expression. So if, if several uh, program elements have the same expression, they get the same color, right? So this has the same color like this as this, so it's easy to spot things that fit or that belong together. So this is really just an editing convenience. Um, and when you actually build the system, you have to decide which program elements should be in the variant. In other words, uh, which variant should be used. And what the system will do once you specify that is during the transformation, it will just throw out all those elements um, for which uh, the, the, the presence condition, this thing, is false. And so it essentially acts like an if def. So in the build configuration, the way you do this is you specify that you want this variability mapping where you say for the feature model flight processor you want one of these three configurations and then if you rebuild your system it processes the program and throws out all the stuff that shouldn't be in there. So that's uh, what we have right now. This is all negative variability, the static stuff, which means you put all the things into a program and then uh, you remove them depending on the selection status. Um, we will be working on positive variability in the future, you know, like aspect orientation or superposition, where you can uh, have, um, well, pieces of functionality that you can kind of weave into the program if you select the configuration feature or not. Um, that is something we don't have yet. There is also another feature in MPS that we are waiting for to make this really useful. Anyway, that was a quick overview.